Happy homebrew Wednesday. It is a brew day. Look, I'm outside. Amazing. We've got one day of cloudy with sun between these six days of constant rain. So, but hey, it's the first day of summer, so it's a good start. So, it's an unexpected brew day. It was supposed to be. This is Saturday. It's supposed to be brewing tomorrow. Originally planned, but um, my wife basically had to leave. She had to go to the funeral, and then she was meeting her friends for lunch. So that meant an unexpected brew window opened, so you have to take advantage of these things. So that's what I'm doing, for you a cup of coffee. This is literally the, the first chance I've had to sit down all morning, from like she woke me up at 8 o'clock or whatever it was. So yeah, unfortunately what that means then is I've got the two kids and we don't have long because they're going to be coming out here very soon. And yeah, I'm not really sure how much footage I'm going to get. But we will plough on ahead. Also, there's someone cutting trees down or something over there, and yeah, it's really loud and noisy. So, I'm taking a little bit of footage already, but I'm gonna have to. I can't. You won't be able to hear it basically, so I'm gonna play a little bit of music on over it. So, got me waffling already. Seriously, just shut up. What are you doing? Do a coconut porter. So I've been drinking away on the Anzac biscuit ale. It's starting to turn out quite nice. And every time I drink it, I think that would be really that coconut flavour would be really good in a porter. So I don't have any dark beer on, so I figured let's do that. Very simple. So um, I've been making recipes. I tend to make the recipes um, and then have them sitting just for what I have, and then I can change them um, whether I choose to do them or not. I don't know. It just depends how I feel. So this one here then is as I I have knew I already had all the stuff sitting. So we're talking 84% um, pale malt, that was minch malt, that's just the normal stuff, 5.7% um, crystal, 40 ABCs, there's 5% chocolate, 3% acid malt and 2.3% black malt as well too, it's mainly for colour and just to get a little bit extra roast in there. In terms of hops, I'm going to be using one type of hop, it's called opal. Now, I don't really know what opal is, to be honest. Um, I've never seen them for sale before. The only the first time I've ever seen them was when I got sent them by Mick, Flat Bear Mick. Opal hops feature a clean aroma and flavour profile of spice and citrus with a hint of sweetness from Germany. No idea what they are. So I'm going to be using um, 76, 74 grams, which is basically all I have left. So that is 23 grams, 50 minutes, 25 grams at 25 minutes, and 26 grams, 10 minutes. So and it's all going to be leaf as well too. So it should be interesting to see. So I'm definitely having the spider with this. Um, we also have. I'm intending to brew with BRY97. Now I was going to pitch. Was, the plan was to pitch onto a yeast cake, which I have on there now. There's a peel on. But it's dry hopping, and it, it's not due to not get, not due to finish until tomorrow. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Whether I'm going to just put it into the keg now, or whether to rack it um, into a, another vessel and then pitch onto it, or just use something else. I've got a few other yeasts in there. Um, I'm not sure exactly what I have, but um, I know I've got some SO4, which I could possibly use. I can't really remember what else. So we'd have to. Um, Figure that one out later on. So yeah, that's it. We are getting up to the boil now. I've just finished the sparge, and yeah, as uh, I'm gonna try and get some footage. I don't know exactly how much I'm gonna get because the kids are gonna be running about. But um, yeah, it is what it is, you know. I'll definitely see it at the end, regardless. So we're down a couple of points on the recipe. 
unfortunately. Um, with the whole yeast situation, I actually had some of this which I top cropped um, a couple of weeks ago. Now, I, I wasn't sure that there was enough in the jar, but I'm going to toss it in anyway. And then, if, then I, if it doesn't ferment out fully, then I can toss in something else. But I think I think we should just get away with this. Not more get away with it, like, you know. So, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do. We're going in the fridge. I don't think I've shown you this fridge yet. Not that there's much to see, but maybe I'll well have a look. So, so that's the main fermenting fridge. This is the second one, which I've hooked up. You can see this is my kind of jerry rig this up. I need to get a band to go around to hold that in place, but that seems to work. So basically, the pink bird's over there. It's coming down here, it's just coming around the side of the door, and the same with this. So it means I can basically take that out and take that out and use it as a normal fridge. No harm done. Okay, we're going to dry hop the porter. This in the bag, this is our coconut. This is about 200 grams. Toasted it on Monday, I suppose it was about six days, six days ago, something like that. So I, the last time I did this I put it in a bag, but I think I might just toss it in to um, the fermenter the way it is. Still smells absolutely fantastic. Mm. Delicious, absolutely delicious. So, got it in here. I've switched it over. This is now back to being a beer fridge. Sorry, a hot fridge, a beer fridge. So, if I just get it in to the fermenter without it falling everywhere, all around the side, we'd be doing well. That little bit of yeast has done the trick. Okay, there it goes. Will it help us? That's it. See it tasting? Boop! Bear elevator. There it is. Look at that. That is the porter. That is the coconut porter right there. Um, before I start, I'll just say if I seem a bit um, tired and stuff in this video, it's because I am. I bloody am. I've been out, I've been basically been out in the garden all day. It's like I'm still in my run and stuff. This is like half nine at night, or something like that. And I went out for a run this morning at about half nine, I don't know, or maybe later. Still in it, because I had to cut the grass and I had to do everything else. And then I had to a lot of barbecue and stuff. And then, like, suddenly, it's like, see when you have a barbecue around here, it's like suddenly people just arrive from nowhere. I don't know how they know. So, yeah. So, yeah, I had to entertain a load of kids today. So I made them, actually made them like a big long slip and slide type thing with sheets of tarpaulin that I have that have been laying in the back there um, for God knows how long. And um, yeah, I was trying to be a young, the young lad. I think I've actually properly racked my knee. I was trying to do like a Ole Gunnar Solskjaer slide across the bloody slip and slide and I, yeah, I think I've twisted my knee or something like that. I've properly hurt it. So yeah. Anyway, never mind all that bullshit. But yeah, I even did that in the bloody run and stuff, and I'm still wearing it. It seems to have dried. Yeah, okay. Cut that all out, don't worry. Ooh, there you are! Ooh, coconut porter. There it is, right there. Um, It's looking good. It is looking mm, pretty dark. Pretty darn black. Maybe a little bit of hint of brown about it as well, but... Yeah, looking good. It's a nice kind of off-white head. It's not really tan. There's not that much dark greens in this, is there? There's well, no, there is. There's like black malt and the chocolate malt too. One and two. It smells good. It does smell good now. It doesn't smell quite as intense as it was originally. Now it's been in the keg about a month. It is, it was, I think it was, on Brewfather it was like 31 days, I believe. So that's quite late to do a review. 
I know it's a porter and all, but I kind of dry hopped it with the coconut. What I actually did with the coconut then was to, I toasted it, <clears throat> so those 200 grams went into the mash. I toasted it, so basically got a, a baking tray, put down a bit of greaseproof paper underneath, and then put the coconut on the top, into the oven every five minutes or so. Take it out, turn it around, just make sure it's keep keep it moving about so it doesn't burn. The grease proof paper helps it to not burn as well as I've found. And then keep turning that and just do it for about half an hour or something like that. So I put one in the mash and then I put one in the um, the dry hop as well afterwards. What I found out, and it was the same with the Anzac one because I did exactly the same with the Anzac as I've done with this, is that the dry hop is like, it does seem to be like hop, like hops, you know, you dry hop and then within a couple of weeks it starts to fade. This is a month now. It is still in there, but it's more kind of that, it's more kind of that porter type of smell, a bit of chocolate. A bit of grass, but I think that's just from my clothes, are generally grassy from outside. So, anyway, I'm going in. I need a drink, seriously. I'm, I am actually in proper agony here. Might have to leave that in now, the whole story about the bloody slip and slide. So you know what that is. Just shut up and drink. Okay. Bloody flies flying about. It is nice. It is really nice. Finish at 6%. It wasn't supposed to be 6%, it was supposed to be something like 5%. That was the plan. I used BRY 87, which is like, it's like a USO5, basically Lalman's version of that. Which is not a bad yeast, I have to say. I've used it, you know, about three or four times now. From the same packet. I love reusing your yeast. Um, it's really nice. It, it 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 gives it that real the cleanness that I wanted because I want to be able to taste those malts and that coconut especially. The coconut taste is definitely is in, is in there. When it was um when it was first when it was first pouring it off the keg, it had this real kind of intense coconut and chocolate. It was like a bounty bar basically. It tasted like a bounty bar. This, you're still getting a little bit of that. It's not quite as um, much as it was, but it is still nice. It's definitely in there still. I really like this. I think it's turned out really well. Um, far better than the Anzac one. The Anzac one was okay, um, but I think this one is far better. So I was right about that, that the coconut does definitely go better in that kind of darker beer. The more kind of chocolatey type of beer, rather than like a stout or something like that. Um, so yeah, so we'll be brewing this again definitely. Um, I would still like to do Clive's, I know it's not Clive's recipe, but Clive had sent me uh, the Lingonberry Porter, and that was fantastic as well, so really should have sent Clive one of these actually, now you'll think about it. So. Anyway, this could just descend into a ramble, if it isn't already a ramble. Basically what I'm saying is this is a winner. This is good. So, uh, yeah, all's well with the world. So, cheers and see you next week. Well, everybody heard Everybody hurts